Hello and welcome to uh, part 2 in flight mechanics and uh, derivation of equation of motion of an aircraft. Okay, let's re review some concepts in the last lecture. Uh, we see here in this picture we have uh, two frames of two axis system, which is body axis system and uh, uh, fixed uh, frame or inertial frame, which is fixed to earth, and this one body frame is fix it to the aircraft okay so this one fix it to aircraft and it is rotating when the aircraft is rotating okay so when uh, for example if we have an aircraft like now this fixed body and this is body when when it pitch up when it make a uh, when the aircraft is pitching this way of course X body will go this way and Z body will go this way. So the body axis system is moving with the aircraft and rotating the aircraft. And this one is fixed to Earth, which is called fixed frame, uh, uh, inertial frame, or Earth frame, X frame. So it's called uh, inertial frame. Okay, inertial, inertial frame. Okay, as I said, the natural frame is fixed to Earth. This one is fixed, fixed to Earth, and it's not moving, it's not rotating. We will assume it as fixed. Okay, we'll see another um, uh, frame later. It's called navigation frame. Okay, let's now um, take these two: the body frame and inertial frame. Okay. Now let's talk about derivation of equation of motion of rigid body. Okay, as I said in the last lecture, the derivation of equation of motion we will use the Newton second law. Newton second law of motion law of motion which is stated as summation of forces of all external forces acting on body acting on body will equal to time rate of change of m times v which is linear momentum okay this quantity called linear momentum okay mass times velocity and the summation of moments acting on body will equal to time rate of change of H which is H called angular momentum momentum okay these two time rate of change this derivative and this derivative is referred to inertial axis Okay, so these two derivatives are referred to inertial axis. So it's sometimes we find it like now d by dt of this quantity, for example, n times v. You will find some notation here, uh, which is you know this is with respect to inertial axis. Okay, of course, we are talking about a rigid body in space in three dimension. So there are three components of force and three com components for moments okay let's write it down here we have fx which is equal to oh, for example this force for the summation of force there's fx and fy and fz okay and the moments summation of moments 
there are three components which is called in, in, and in. Okay. Okay. F of x will be equal to time rate of change in times the velocity. F y one d by t m times z and f z equal time rate of change of m times w. Okay. What's this u v and w? We see it now. For example, if we have a velocity vector in this way, v capital V or v body, this velocity vector has components into x body and y body and, and z body and y body. So we have here called u, this one, the component of v body about this body is called u and along this called w and along this called small z okay all these are vectors here okay and the moments which is l d by dt of which along the x-axis Okay, all this time rate of change it was, it is with, with respect to inertial axis. Okay, okay now, now there's a relation from dynamics called the derivative d by dt of a vector a with respect to some fixed axis, for example, in our case, inertial axis equal to time rate of change of the same vector with respect to body axis plus omega cross product this vector okay this is the angular velocity by inertial inertial axis system system and this body axis system okay so our summation of force will be equal to d by dt m times v, v body I mean okay because in, in most cases is uh, constant so m t by dt of v this as I said is with respect to inertial axis so we have m times this d by dt of v with respect to body axis okay plus omega cross product of this vector v okay okay the summation of moments or time rate of change of h which is equal to all this with respect to this one with respect to inertia respect to inertia which is equal to d by dt the same h with respect to body plus omega of body x of body x and this body axis cross this vector h okay okay the components of force and moments the component the components of this force and this moment is composed of aerodynamic the component the component of force and moments acting on aircraft uh, is composed of aerodynamic, aerodynamic plus gravitational, gravitational, gravitational plus propulsion system, propulsion, propulsion system. <coughs> so these three contribute on the components of summation of force, summation of moments. Okay. All these components are, came from these uh, factors. Okay. So, as I said here, v along body axis, this one, are three components u, v, and w. Let's write it down. 
U V W omega and second one P Q and R what's P Q R let's uh, this we call this row weight the trade this yaw rate P and this one Q and this one R this is called Rho H Yaw rate okay Angular velocity. Okay. This linear velocity. Linear velocity. Okay. Now, when we substitute these two vectors here and these two equations, this one and this one, we'll take this relations. Right here. Okay, as I said, summation of force will be equal to time rate of change of m times v for d with respect to inertial axis, which is equal to time rate of change of m v body along the body axis plus omega body plus m v body. Okay, so this will be equal to summation of forces along x axis u dot plus qw x r v x r v all this times mass smash of y v dot minus pw plus r u times mass it's very straightforward, you just substitute all these mutations, all these vectors, and you'll get these answers. PV minus Q times U times mass. So we got this one, two, three equation, and all these. As I said, this came from gravity, aerodynamic, and propulsion system. Okay, let's move to the moments now. Okay, so measure of moments will be equal to time rate of change of angular momentum with respect to inertial axis, which is equal to d by dt of hp with respect to body plus omega body cross this hp. Okay, the angular momentum. And h is equal to i times omega dot. Okay. This i is mass moment of inertia, mass moment of inertia. And this is the angular acceleration here. Angular acceleration. Okay. Just, just substitute angular acceleration because we know the body omega body is pqr as I said earlier so dot will be equal to this dot dot and this dot okay and i will be equal to i x x minus i x y minus i x z i y y i z z Just substitute these two into here. We'll get one note here that I 
xy equal to zero and i yz is equal to zero. This pro these two product of inertia is equal to zero because we have exit plane of an aircraft is a plane of symmetry. Okay. We have an aircraft here. This x is a body. This plane is plane of symmetry, which is divide the aircraft into two parts. Okay. So we have zero and zero. Zero and zero. Okay. We get from this, 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 and this one. Okay. Okay. We lift off with which is we call this L which is a roll moment or moment I6 V dot I one Y Q times R plus I stick Q times R summation of moments along one axis which is called M which is pitching moment will equal to I X Z times P square minus R square plus I Y Y Q dot plus I X X P times R and I Z Z P times R. Okay, a summation of moment along Z axis, which is called a yaw moment. Yaw moment, which is equal to I Z Z R dot minus I X Z P dot. Q times R minus I X X P Q plus I Y Y P Q. Okay, it's very straightforward. You can just, uh, as I said here, you substitute these two into this equation and you find the components of M X and M Y and M Z and you find this one. Okay, so this are other three equations. Four, five, and six. We find out here three fourths equation. Here, one, two, three, and three moments equation, which is this thing. Okay. I hope you find this video helpful for you, and see you next time. Thank you for watching.